Hi there! So, in a 2013 interview with Kotaku, legendary game designer Shigeru Miyamoto was asked the question, you said you made a bad game. What was the bad game you made? His reply? That's right, it was Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. Now, compared to the other games in the series, this one stands out like a sore thumb. Rather than utilising the top-down perspective that its predecessor and many of the titles following it used, large parts of this game took place from a side-on perspective. Plus, the game included many RPG elements which later games ended up ditching, like experience points for levelling up magic, power and life. That certainly doesn't sound like the other Zelda games, right? But why did this game turn out to be so different from all the others in the series? Well, let us find out. It was late 1980, not long after Shigeru Miyamoto's action-adventure royale The Legend of Zelda was released. Now, this game was wildly successful. Reviewers loved it, players couldn't get enough. But that didn't phase Miyamoto. Instead of beginning work on a sequel right away, Miyamoto wanted to create a brand new, totally original title. And so, he told designer Tadashi Sugiyama, I want to make a side-scrolling action game which makes use of up and down movements for attacks and defence. And so, Sugiyama assembled a cosy team of about 10 developers to put together this unique game. They all started experimenting a whole bunch with how to create a game that fulfilled Miyamoto's request. They began production without having a solid plan in mind, but before long, they came upon an idea. What if the game would switch views between an overhead perspective and a side-on view? This would make for some totally unique gameplay. However, according to Miyamoto, this idea was severely limited by the hardware the game was being developed on. Like Zelda 1, this game was to be released for the Famicom Disk System, which was great for the most part. The Disk System allowed games to be much larger in size, allowing for bigger, grander adventures. However, according to Miyamoto, from a hardware perspective, if we had been able to have the switch between the scenes speed up, if that had been faster, we could have done more with how we used the side-scrolling versus the overhead view, and kind of the interchange between the two. But because of the limitations on how quickly those scenes changed, we weren't able to. If you're wondering what Miyamoto's talking about, check out this video of the game being played on an original Famicom Disk System. They go to change from an overhead to a side-on perspective, and... Yeesh, wait indeed. Because of this 6 or 7 second long transition every time the viewpoint was changed, the team didn't feel like they could switch the scene too often, for fear of irritating players. Now, one of the most unusual features of this game were the random encounters the player would experience travelling across the map. One second you'd be traversing the world, the next, you'd be chased down by a bunch of ominous blobs who took no displeasure in killing you as quickly as possible. So, what was the reason for this radical change? Again, it was limitation. Because of a lack of storage space, yes, even with the larger capacity of the disk system, the team needed to find a way to have the player battle the same enemies a number of times. Their answer to this? Random encounters. However, without some kind of motivation, these encounters would quickly become irksome. To solve this problem, the team added a levelling system. When you fought an enemy, you'd be able to fill up your life, magic or power bars just a little more. However, yet more limitations held back the team's vision. According to Miyamoto, it would have been nice to have bigger enemies in the game, but the Famicom hardware wasn't capable of doing that. Certainly with hardware nowadays you can do that, and we have done that, but of course nowadays creating bigger enemies takes a lot of effort and so the enemies had to be a lot smaller than the team originally envisioned. Now, one of the biggest complaints about the game that the team received was its extremely high difficulty. However, it wasn't always going to be this way. In the final game, the player can level up their magic, life and power eight times. Originally though, Miyamoto wanted the max levels to be double that, 16. However, as development went on, the team decided to make it a little trickier. According to Sugiyama, the foundation of action games at the time was to feel difficult for everyone. Games didn't have a ton of content at that time, so in order to have them played for as long as possible, we felt like we couldn't make them easily clearable. That wasn't the only reason though. Since the team would have to test the game again and again and again, they would get bored if the game wasn't hard enough. And so, they had to keep bumping up the difficulty. Which was all well and good for them, but it meant for the average player, the minimum skill required to complete the game was very high. 
In fact, after the game released, Nintendo got a call from a customer who exclaimed, I just can't beat the final boss. However, it turned out that he was fully leveled up already, so the team ended up telling him, you can only rely on your skill at this point. Ouch. Now, as development neared the end, the team made a dramatic decision. Up until this point, the game was planned as a totally original game, not to be part of any pre-existing series. However, at the last minute, they decided the main character should be a 16-year-old Link from The Legend of Zelda instead, making this game a sequel to last year's game. Now, The Legend of Zelda stood out as a title. Rather than sounding like the name of a game, it sounded more like the name of a book or something. And so, the team decided to follow suit, titling their game Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. As for the exact reasoning why they chose this name, according to Sugiyama, when thinking of a way to best describe the contents of the game, Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link seemed to pass without objection. I forgot. And so, on the 14th of January 1987, Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link was released for the Famicom Disk System. Financially, it was a big success, becoming the long-standing best-selling Zelda game in Japan, only beaten by 2017's Breath of the Wild. Despite all this success though, Miyamoto never ended up liking this game. In a 2013 Kotaku interview, he explained, When we're designing games, we have our plan for what we're going to design, but in our process it evolves and grows from there. In Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, unfortunately all we ended up creating was what we had originally planned on paper. Back in 2003, he reiterated, All games I make usually get better in the development process, since good ideas keep coming. But Zelda 2 was sort of a failure. However, not all was bad. When Sugiyama was told that a number of people's favourite Zelda game was Zelda 2, he responded, Those kind of people exist? <laughs> That's a joke, of course, but I'm very grateful when someone says that. As a game creator, that is the best compliment to receive, so thank you all very much. 30 years have passed since its release, but please give Zelda 2 Adventure of Link a try. Hi there, thanks for watching to the end. I hope you found that one interesting. Have you ever tried this game? If so, what were your thoughts? Plus, subscribe for more videos like this weekly. Plus, sharing this video with friends helps me out a ton. Right, that's all. Bye!